Hi folks, Penblade here, and I'm here to go over how to play Alpha Strike. If you've watched the breakdown video and you're still interested in this, well, I'm glad to have you here. And we're going to go over the four phases in the turn, and um, if you're not going out to your local game store to buy the Lance Packs that are currently available for this game, well, we have an easy option for you to actually work on with that. Um, and there are four phases to the game, which we'll go over, and we'll also go over the cards for Alpha Strike, which are kind of the keys to actually understanding this game. I hope you learned a lot from this video, and if you have any questions, comments, or if you uh, want to know something else, feel free to leave a comment. Uh, I obviously won't be able to get everything that is in the full game because I'm teaching the introductory, inter, eh, introductory game this time around. But if you have any questions, feel free to ask, because I love to answer questions. And I hope you find this very informative and that it actually piques your interest enough that you actually want to go out and try the game. Well, let's get started. All right, folks, the first thing you want to look at when you're actually wanting to play a game is the character card. This will actually help you understand most of the game. First thing you'll notice is, is that there is a point cost to everything. You add these up to get your totals. It tells you the name of the unit, the size of the unit, which is one through one through four. One being light, two being medium, three being heavy, and four being assault. The movement is eight and jump jets. So this can move eight inches and has jump jets so you can jump over objects. This shows you the role that would be best suited for. The other, these other, these other items here are both used in the full game, so we're going to ignore them. Um, this is short, medium, and long range. Short is basically six or less inches from the target this goes um uh anything greater than six but shorter than 24 inches that is medium range and 24 inches to 48 range is considered long range long range uh we will get to the numbers in parentheses over here this is the amount of damage you do for each type this is the overheat value which allows you to do an extra point of damage if you add to your heat scale and is the only way you can get heat. A is for armor. So when you take damage, you'll actually fill one of these out and it will be gone for the game. When you run out of armor, you go into structure. When you hit into structure, there's a possibility that there is a critical hit and you will have to take some of these down here, which could be possibly an engine hit. If you hit somebody's engine, then hit it again, they die. Um, every time you hit the fire control, they, the to hit modifier goes up. MP halves the movement each time it happens. And weapons, you lose a point of damage every single time. So as you can kind of tell, um, critical hits in this game are pretty nasty, as we'll go over. Uh, especially because two of them actually are uh, destroy the mech instantly. But we'll get into that later on. But for now, uh, the other thing I forgot to go over is this blank box right here is skill. Uh, that is the mech warrior piloting it, piloting it. A standard mech warrior is four and then works your way down to one. Um, we will go over how that fits in later on. But this is the basic card. There are icons over here that indicate, you know, what this is obviously a mech. But it also indicates what factions they're from and you know what this would basically be used by so according to this one it's a mech but it's not in it's basically used by practically everyone and that covers the character cards cards so once you actually know how these cards work the first thing you're going to do is create an army so in this uh, particular case the Jenner and the Centurion are one army and the Blackjack and the Clint are another if you check the numbers on the corners over here 27 and 20 this is a 47 point army, while this one is 20 and 48, which is a 48 point army. So these are obviously 50 point armies. Um, at this point, I'm going to put up um, an address on the screen. And if you're not gonna be able to get these, but there is a introductory book there that you can download for free from uh, this website and they have starter pieces and everything so that you can actually play without even have to, having to drop a dime. The only thing you're going to have to do is print out the items and cut them out and put them on your table and make them look pretty. 
But we're going to start with a 50-point army using the Clinton, the Blackjack, and versus the Jenner and the Centurion to actually go over one full turn of play. All right, now it's time to actually start setting up for the game. So, to start the game, bring your trusty dice over, and you'll roll to see who gets the higher number. So this team will get a three, and the other team gets a six. So the Clinton, the Blackjack, will go first for setting up. Now, the first thing that would happen is you take any terrain you have, which we have it's a little cops of trees here, and they would get first shot at actually putting out terrain. So we'll put it right in the dead center over here. Um, in most games, your figures start off the board and then have to come in. However, uh, most people play by the rule that you can set up on the table edge over here and put your people in one at a time, uh, facing across from one another. So, in this case, we're going to have the Clint. The Clint and the Blackjack will be setting up on this side, while the Centurion and the Jenner set up on the opposing side. So, we will put them... Let's go up a little bit more. So over here on the table, and these guys will be over here. You can put them any facing you'd like. Most likely you want to turn them so they are facing against one another. You can move them at you can move them up to 10 inches away from the table edge. You would basically play these guys one at a time, so I'll put him there. And then he'll put him there. Another one, he'll set the other one up right there, and uh, he'll set the Jenner right over here. And there you go. That is how you set up your game. All right, so phase one is probably the most important part of this game. Phase one, you take your dice and roll them. So four for this side, and a massive two for this side. Well, we'll get the critical misses out now. So this side wins initiative. You verify initiative every at the beginning of every single round. So in this case, because with the virtue of their four, the Clint and the Blackjack will be going last. Wait, wait, Mike, you said they're going last, and I and I would say yes, this is true. If you think about this, going last is actually pretty significant. But as we're just in the initiative phase now, we will get into the benefits of that later on as we move into phase two. All right, so phase two, now going back to our game, phase two is the movement phase. So therefore, we're going to be moving our mechs one at a time. So the first person to go is the person who lost initiative. It makes no sense, right? So therefore, the this player has two options. They can send the Jenner 14 inches or use eight jump jets or move eight. So we're gonna move the Jenner 14 inches. Jenner's right here, and we can just go 14 inches. Now you can put them at an angle. So let's say you want to put it as close to the cups as possible, and you don't have to move the full the full length. So we're just going to move it right here, as as well within its range, and he's done. Now it is their turn to move. So we've got a 12 move and an 8 move. Well, I want to save the... Well, we'll save this move just just in case he does something crazy. But the blackjack can definitely move safely. So this is the blackjack over here. And he can move 8. Just put it at the edge of the figure as I get my... as I knock around the other figure. There we go. And you can move him eight. Now let's say I wanted to keep myself with this copse of trees here. So I want to keep myself aligned with it. So over here, he moves eight, but this is seven. If I want to move seven and then continue a different direction, all I have to do is move him seven and then move the remaining one inch after that. So he would go one more inch. 
And that is an eight movement. The blackjack is moved. And now it looks like he's going to be taking on the Jenner. The only person left on this side is the Centurion, who has an eight move. So we will send him ahead. Send him ahead for eight. And now the Clint, which has been kind of sticking by itself, has a 12 movement with jump jets. So jump jets allow you to jump over any anything in the way. So if that copse of trees was actually closer, it would jump over, over it instead of having to go around it. But in this case, we are going to put this particular Clint, eh, he's going to jump over, he's going to jump over his buddy and go to that one foot marker right there. So he's going to go right here. Sound effects optional. So, now, because the movement phase is over, this is what we have after round one, after phase two. And that is the end of the movement phase as everybody else has moved, which brings us to phase three. Phase three is the combat phase, which is pretty much where most of the action is going to take place in this, in this uh, game. So there are seven things you need to take care of if you're going to resolve your weapon attacks. And that is... To verify your line of sight, your firing arc, determine the range, determine the two hit number, roll, apply damage, and then apply critical hits. It sounds like a mouthful. I'm going to actually put it up on the screen too to kind of emphasize it. So, step one. Let's, uh... So, remember as I said, the, the initiative people get a advantage. Well, the pe person that lost initiative fires first. Wait, why would, they do, why would they do that? You wonder. Well, if you notice on the Blackjack and Clint, they both have overheat numbers. Now, if the Blackjack or Clint were to go, go down during this turn, uh, the damage does not resolve until the end phase. So therefore, you could technically pop in that extra heat knowing you're going to die at the end of the turn and, and do some more significant damage. So these guys will fire off all their weapons or, or you know, pass if necessary. And then these two will get their chance to attack. This is one of the reasons why winning initiative is so big. So, we'll start with the Jenner versus the Clint. This is right on top of each other. Um, so, first we have to determine, can he see the unit? Well, that, that's pretty obvious. He can see it fairly well. Verifying the firing arc. The back of the unit over here this back the back of the uh unit you create an imaginary line that goes from the back of the unit outward on both sides anything behind that is behind and not in the line of sight so it has to be completely behind this line in order for it not to see what's going on over here so yes it is definitely in line of sight uh in the firing arc determine range so now we need to measure out in inches how far away is that thing and at this point uh, roughly three inches so that is definitely short range there's no two ways about it so short range so therefore with the Jenner put this over here right now Jenner will be taking on the Clint and it is a short range. The next thing that we have here is determining the two hit number. Well, the two hit number is a number of different things. There's actually a table of it in the introductory guide. And yes, it looks intimidating, but honestly, it's a lot easier than you think it is. So, So 
So for a short range, you add nothing. To, you actually start off by putting your base mech warrior skill. So for the Jenner, it's going to be four. Because as I said before, four is your standard mech warrior with no training. Just the basic mech warrior fresh out of the academy. So the number is four. Um, you then add how far away it is. So there is no modifier here. So the number stays at four. Um, you then... Um, You then check what the available move is that the that the that your target has, which on him, it is 12. So the 12, according to the according to this, gives it a plus two modifier. So now the two hit number is at six. None of the other modifiers apply here. So the number, the two hit modifier is six. After you've done that, you must roll to hit. So therefore, Take your two six-sided dice, and you need a six or better. And that is a ten. So therefore, with the ten, the Jenner does two points of damage. Before you actually declare your, um, before you actually roll, you can declare that you want to do a point of overheat to heat yourself up and do three points instead. The overheat actually adds a point of damage onto it. But for right now, we're going to use two, and the Clint's going to lose... Two armor in this case, which I don't have my thing with me. I'm not sure if this works. No, it doesn't. Sorry about that. So we're just going to say he's got two damage. I don't have any way of marking that, however. Um, and the Jenner. So we have determined and applied the damage, two damage, which goes onto his armor. So he is now down to his structure. Uh, roll for critical hits if applicable. Well, he didn't get a critical hit there because there is no damage to the structure itself. So until there is damage done to the structure, we can't exactly do that just yet. So the other person that, that is involved here is, now that the Jenner is fired, the Centurion still has a shot as well. Now, as we were saying, do you have line of sight? Um, the line of sight is obscured over here. If you see, he has to shoot through this tree line. So, yeah, he has line of sight, but it's obscured. Um, so line of sight is not blocked in this case. Um, he obviously has firing arc again, as we, as we determined before. So now we have to determine the range of it. Someday I'll remember not to do that. So he is about eight inches away. So this is going to be a medium range shot. And at medium range, well, that's pretty good because he does three points of damage. So he might be able to kill um, the Clint this turn. Uh, we then go on to determine the two hit number. Okay, so again, it's four because we're using ordinary mechs, mech warriors here. So four. At medium range, as you see in the parentheses, it's a plus two, so it's six to hit so far. His available move is 12, as we went over earlier, so that is another two points, so that is plus eight. And because there is a woods in the way of his shot, this pushes it all the way up to 10. So four for the base, two for the medium range. Two because he can't see through there, and two because of his movement. So that makes it ten. So now, yeah, he can do the kill, but he's got to get a ten or better. And that would have missed. Now, let's say it did hit. So, and I actually want to do this for the sake of actually doing it. The Clint would take three structure damage. As I said before, if... The if the character if the character dies at the end of the turn, so that he's not dead yet. When you take structure damage, you get one critical hit. So therefore, there will be a critical hit roll, and there is another table for determining what happens in a critical hit. This is the um, the introductory 
rules right there. I ha my, the book is actually on its way. Um, so you roll your two six side dice and then consult the table. So nine. Nine is no critical hit, so it doesn't do anything crazy. But this, but there is a possibility that if you hit something with a structure hit, you could actually take it out of the game completely. It happens. It's a known to happen even. So, in this case, he has lost everything, so by the end of the turn, he will be destroyed. These two are done firing, so their phase ends. I would go through the rest of this, but for the sake of time, we've already gone over what happens, so we're going to just keep the Clint and Blackjack the way they are, and we'll move on to the last phase. All right, phase four is the end phase, which is um, actually a pretty easy phase. So all of the... There are two things you need to worry about in the end phase. First, all damage is applied. So the Clint took five damage, so at the end of this turn, he will die. Um, if for some reason the Clint actually stayed in, we talked about him using his overheat to uh, fire back at these guys. So let's say he did survive. His overheat, his overheat would go to one, he would have done three damage, to, or tried to do three damage to something. Um, so if it goes up to one, thing to understand about heat is that it also takes two off your movement. So it doesn't exactly help you if you, uh, it, well, it will help you, however, but this also isn't affected by jump jets. So therefore, if you're using jump jets like the Clint is, it won't exactly take away its move. But if it did not have this J, this J here for jump jets, then with a one heat, this would actually redu be reduced to 10 movement and so on and so forth as you do more heat. Um, you actually decrease your heat. You actually decrease your heat by just not using overheat abilities. It naturally goes down. So, um, yes, there is a way to get, there are ways to get rid of heat. If you manage to go over heat if you overheat so much that you actually go to four this s over here your mech shuts down and while shut down your opponents get a negative four to their to hit modifier now remember that's negative four for their to hit so therefore if you have a skill of four and you know the the situation up here where that was six a negative four shot would have been a two to hit which let's face it guys that's an automatic hit right there um, so that really concludes the end phase, and that is one standard turn in a game of Alpha Strike. All right, folks, that's the Alpha Strike tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, if you had any other questions, feel free to ask in the comments below. Uh, on top of that, um, I know I put forward the introductory um, rule book in a little bit of light over here, gave you the address and all that. Please be aware that they actually don't skimp you on the um, on the introductory rules. They actually give you 16 mechs that you can print out. Uh, yes, they're going to be cardboard. Um, they're not going to be like you saw the mechs that I was using were from Lance Packs. Um, the really tougher versions of these mechs will be in the Lance Packs, but the mechs they give you in the starter pack are not bad either. Um, and really, if you actually print them out and actually put them onto some cardstock, you'll be one. You'll have tons of fun with this game. Uh, it also comes with plenty of terrain. Obviously, not the custom jobs you see here, but it comes with plenty of terrain, plenty of like more difficult paths and the such. I know I didn't cover that, but I was going. I was basically giving people the basic rules uh, under the assumption that you're not going to be traversing through crazy terrain and the such. Just that you're like that. Just that you're trying to play the game as it was given to you. Um, again, if you have any other questions like that, there are a lot more rules than just what I went over. But I don't. I don't feel that all those rules are necessary for playing the game. So, I hope you enjoyed this. If you really are looking into it, please feel free to go to uh, Catalyst website and get the um, introductory rule book. I mean, it's well worth the time. They also have Battletech there, which we might cover, but I just don't. <laughs> Battletech, the, um, a standard game of Alpha Strike will take you one hour. Um, less than, depending on how many uh, figures you're running. 
uh, Battletech will take you six hours for four max on four max. So yeah, <laughs> we might do Battletech, but I highly doubt it. Um, Alpha Strike is a little bit more streamlined and it should be a little bit more fun to play. Give it a try for yourself. I mean, you know, obviously you can watch the game on, this, on the 15th and make a call for yourself, but you know, give it a try at least. I mean, it's not a bad game and it's designed for most everybody to actually get in and really enjoy giant mech on mech combat. Well, folks, I'll see you next time. I'll see you on the flip side. Hope to see you again soon and, you know, enjoy your day.